Hey guys, welcome back. So today's video is a first for me. This is the first time I'll try to repair a damaged graphics card. This thing is a EVGA GTX 970. Now these graphics cards aren't worth a whole lot nowadays, but I think it's still worth trying to repair it. The time I got it, the original owner asked me to diagnose the damage and potentially repair it. But I wasn't able to, I didn't have the tools. I told him what was damaged and I told him that he could search for someone who can do it, but he said it's not worth it, he won't bother, so he gave the graphics card to me and now today I'm finally able to repair it because I highly suspect that the MOSFETs are damaged, some MOSFETs. But we will diagnose it and see what the damage is and confirm my suspicion. So I already unscrewed everything and we can remove the cooler. I also unscrewed this plate over here. We can set that aside. Now we have access to all the MOSFETs. The MOSFETs over here and the four MOSFETs over here. Now if you try to fix a graphic card, the first thing you should do is see if there is a short within the PCI Express connectors. And the way you do this is pretty simple. You get your multimeter set it on continuity and if there is no short if you go in the first hole over here maybe i should zoom in a bit more okay so if you go in the first hole over here and i'll measure the one on the bottom there shouldn't be a short if everything's all right that's okay next thing everything okay okay and there's the first short, everything okay, and a second short. So this doesn't necessarily mean that there are multiple components damaged, but you, we have definitely a short within the PCI Express connectors, which suggests that one of the MOSFETs is damaged. Now that we know that there is a short within the PCI Express connector, the next thing to do would then remove the uh, the cooler and everything and search for damage on the actual PCB. We have to do a visual inspection because if the PCB itself would be burned this is something that is likely not repairable because these PCBs they are multi-layer boards so if the PCB is burned then you it's very likely you won't be able to fix it. But if there's no visual damage, then we can start to diagnose. And the, the first thing you would do is go to the MOSFETs over here and also these over here. Now these are very important because you have to understand that the graphics card gets most of its power through these PCI Express connectors. A small portion, I think this part over here is for power within the PCI Express slot small portion over here I think it's limited to 75 watt of power most portion uh, most uh, power gets pushed through here and these connectors they get uh, ground and plus 12 volt in but a GPU doesn't need 12 volt it needs depending on the GPU generation something between 1.25 volt to I think the highest voltage I have ever heard of was 2.5 volt something in that region so very low voltages and we essentially have a bug converter configuration on the PCB and these MOSFETs over here have to push high currents into the GPU so they get really really hot and this means that all the MOSFETs are the likeliest component to get damaged over time and the way to diagnose it is pretty simple. We again get our multimeter in. Now I don't need it in the screen. And it's again in continuity. Now let me zoom in a bit more onto the MOSFETs. Okay, I think that's all right. Now I'll use my uh, probe and get it onto the shield. This is uh, connected to ground. Well, that's all right. And now what you have to do is figure out which of the connections is your um, source and which is your gate. With these MOSFETs, we have a point over here on the right side. And I did take a look, or on the left side, on, on the flipped ones. 
I did take a look into the data sheet, and the data sheet tells me that where the point is, which is also the point corresponding on the package itself, this indicates the uh, source, and we have another source, source, and the left one is the gate. Or with the flip ones, it's the right one. So the opposing side of the MOSFET to the point is your gate. And if we probe the point side, we get a signal, that's all right. If we probe the gate, there shouldn't be any signal. Well, that's all right. Signal. This one is all right. All right. And here, weird, a weird sound because it has 45 ohm of resistance. So this one is damaged. And I will mark this. The reason I mark them is because in a minute I'll, I, I will have forgotten which one it was. Okay, so that's all right. Next one. Okay. That's also okay. Okay, so in this row, or in this uh, portion of the graphics card, only this MOSFET seems to be damaged. And I will now also test the lower four ones, because they could also be damaged. It's more like the, this portion of the graphics part, card, but I think it's best to test all at once. Alright, so this is really just a single MOSFET that is damaged. Now, as I said, this is a first for me trying to fix a graphics card. I don't have too much knowledge, but there are very, very many uh, forums talking about fixing graphics card. And one thing that I uh, saw the most uh, of recommendations is these MOSFETs, they are all driven by MOSFET drivers, like these chips over here, these are MOSFET drivers. And if one of these MOSFETs is damaged, you should always, for one, you should always replace MOSFETs that are in parallel connected with this damaged one. But also you should replace the driver. Now the problem is I don't have these drivers on hand right now. But that shouldn't be a problem. For now, I'll just replace this single MOSFET and then uh, see if the graphics card actually works. Now, I'm not going to power it on right away. I will again uh, test the PCI Express, the PCI connector over here to see if there's still a short. If there's still a short, we have to do a bit more uh, searching on the actual PCB and see if there are more components damaged than just the MOSFET. So replacing this component should be pretty easy. That is just a bit of flux on top. This should spread in a moment when I'll use my heat gun. If I can turn it on. Okay, I'll set it to a slightly higher temperature of 350 degrees Celsius and we will wait until it's hot enough. Okay, should be at temperature. Now I'll try to heat up the MOSFET and remove it. Okay, so I removed the reducing nozzle because for some reason the MOSFET won't budge. I hope to get more heat into this area right now. It's also on a piece of wood so I don't damage my silicone mat underneath. But hopefully it will finally desolder. I also 
cut the temperature up slightly and hopefully it will now work. Now I have to say I'm a bit afraid to put too much heat onto the PCB. I don't want to damage the graphics card. Now this was very unfortunate. My camera died while I was desoldering uh, the MOSFET over here and I have to say I never went in so much trouble desoldering a component. You can't imagine. I was so afraid to break the graphics card because I put so much heat into that single component. All the other MOSFETs around started moving. The gate driver started moving and these three very very tiny components over here this one resistor and these two capacitors they moved and I hope I was able to resolder them these are so tiny they are even tinier than the smallest components I ever soldered I, I hope I did a good job but this thing it won't budge what ended up happening was it, it broke into two pieces let me show you. We have this piece over here. Now this is the top cover of the MOSFET. And then this one was still soldered onto uh, the PCB. And the, the reason it's shiny over here is now because I got some solder on top because I thought maybe I can transfer more heat in if I have a bigger solder uh, like thermal mass on top solder blob on top but this thing this is the internal structure of the MOSFET this is the uh, silicone uh, no not silicone silicate substrate it was so difficult to remove and all other components started moving way before this one did and I have no idea why and when I was, um, when I desoldered, no, what am I talking about? When I prepared the pad over here and I got with my soldering iron on top, I could feel that the PCB underneath the solder, it was crispy. This was like there was more damage underneath, more than what you can see. But I wasn't able to properly clean off the area. I didn't want to damage anything else on the PCB. I didn't want to... Uh, get unnecessary much heat in. So what I'm going to do right now without a new MOSFET installed is see if the short is still uh, happening on the PCI Express connector. And if there is still a short then well the graphics card is not revivable because then it's highly likely that underneath all of the solder there is severe charring and that is not repairable. So Let's see. Uh, I really hope it's working. Wish me luck, guys. <coughs> Continuity works. First, nothing. Just as before. Second one, nothing. Nothing. Now this one was damaged. So uh, this one. I think this one was damaged. The middle one was okay, I think. Yes, it is. Let's see. No short. Nice. And no short. Oh, I'm lucky. It seems like it was really only that component and the potential damage underneath is not too severe. Okay, now... I need replacement components and I already ordered 20 of these. Now these are some uh, NPN MOSFETs. Oh, and, and here's something interesting. These MOSFETs, they are not all the same. There are two types on this uh, graphics card. There's this type, the type I bought, which is the... Let's see, it was the... F oh, I can't read it through there. So the 4C06N is the one type and the other type is the 4C10N. I can't re really remember but one was rated for higher current than the other one. But beside that they are both the same. They are NPN transistors and everything is the same except for the maximum current they can handle. And I think I bought the one that can handle higher current. Let me take a look at the datasheet. 
4C06 and is rated for 69 amp. So yes, I bought the one that is rated for higher current. And the other one is the 4C10N, which is only rated for 46 amp. So 64 amp, 69 amp versus 46 amp. Now let's see which tie broke. Yeah, it's the 4C10N. So the lower rated MOSFET broke. So one of the lower rated MOSFETs broke. Okay, so here's a new one. This will go on top like this. So what I will do is remove the MOSFET for now, heat up the area and the MOSFET at the same time. Just like this. Now as soon as the solder is molten, I will set the MOSFET on top. Now maybe I should use a bit of flux, now that I think about it. Just a tiny dab. That should do the trick. And there we go. Well, let's see. Yeah, that seems to be right. Okay. All the components sit where they are supposed to be. The MOSFET is soldered in place. That's the right way around. So we have our uh, circle over here, the circle on the PCB. So this is uh, the right way around. Now we can test the graphics card, finally. Or not. I inserted a graphics card into the computer and the same MOSFET blew up one more time. Uh, since then I did a lot of work on this graphics card and it still does not work so this will be a multiple part video. In part number two I will uh, tell you everything I did to this thing but for now that is where I'll end the video because uh, otherwise the video would be like three times as long. I hope you liked the video and if you did please leave a like, comment down below and other than that thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye!